Some of our special music this Sunday is a performance of a song called Vapor by the Liturgists. This song really speaks to me because it expresses the majesty, the hugeness, and the broadness, and the depth of God in the lyrics. But the music is soft and gentle. It's almost like a lullaby. To me, it's like it's thundering and intimate at the same time. And when I looked at the scripture for today, this song kept coming to me because I see God entering in here as both huge and thundering and intimate and relational. Moses encounters God and calls out to Moses from a bush of flame, but not consumed, and tells Moses, take off your sandals because you are standing on holy ground. I mean, the soil here is even holy. It's eternal in some ways, like God. It was here long before Moses, and it will be there long, long after he's gone. There's a sense there, too, of the eternity of God, and that broad eternity is manifesting in the world in this one bush, at this one place, at that one time, that catches this one man's eye. And so Moses, reasonably, wants to know more about this God who is calling him. And he asks for God's name. I think asking for somebody's name, there's this relationship and kind of a power sharing when you both know each other's names. And yet God says, perhaps the most annoyingly enigmatic answer, it's kind of a non-answer, God says, I am who I am. And in the Hebrew text, there's actually this future sense to this. It's almost more like, I shall become who I am becoming. This name and identity of God is wrapped up in unfolding possibility. The name given points to God's nature. God doesn't just shape our future. God is at the heart of our future. And that future is built in all of these unfolding possibilities with humans like us. The idea of God as our future is wrapped inextricably up with the fact that God makes this future happen through people. In this unfolding future, there are all these possibilities, and I don't even know if God knows what will happen. Because there are multiple paths when you have a relationship of freedom and trust. And this future just spills out before us as we work out our relationships with God and with each other. And so in this reading, God is entering into the space to craft a relationship and open up the possibility of a future co-created with this one particular person. And when I really sit back and think about it, I think it's amazing and kind of weird that God would want to work with people. I mean, when you're God and you probably have all the means in the universe at your disposal, why don't you just do it yourself? Wouldn't that be easier? I mean, this is coming from somebody who's not a particularly excellent delegator, and I'm, I'm glad God is. I'm, I'm, I'm glad God's ways are not my ways, and God's way, thoughts are not my thoughts for a whole lot of reasons, and it's really good for everybody involved. But when God calls Moses, we learn about the character of God. In working with us, God gives up power and agency and control for the sake of relationship. God invites us into relationship to be co-creators, and then God shares this power together. And it's risky. I think God takes risks with us. Moses was certainly an unlikely candidate for this call. He was a self-described poor speaker and murderer. And God didn't wait, though, for some glowing candidate, some charismatic leader perfectly suited to this particular task. No, God wanted this guy 
flaws and past and all, and wanted to make him into someone amazing. Someone to give a people a future. Do you ever feel ashamed or unlovable because of things you've done or tendencies, habits that you can't shake? Moses did too. And God still called on him to work for an incredible future. But before he could begin, God says, take off your sandals. Remove those barriers that are between you and the holy infinite and engage vulnerably. It's like God saying, be fully present here. Be fully present with me. Feel your feet on this ancient earth and let this living soil coat your skin. This is no accident that you're here and that I'm talking to you. Let me paint you a word picture of an idea I have. This hope for a future. Yeah, it sounds hard, but don't be afraid. Because I will be with you. And so God calls Moses and puts this hope for a future promised hundreds of years ago when God spoke to Abraham and said, number the stars, that's what your descendants will be like, and they will have their own place. That future now is back in this particular human person. And so Moses takes the first step in this sweeping journey. Soon the Israelites will leave their chains behind, cross over dry land through parted waters, and complain and doubt and bicker and try to make their own gods and wander endlessly until they finally get to this land. And Moses doesn't make it there with them, even. But this future spills out in front of him now, full of possibilities. And here's his opportunity to take the first step. And Moses does that typical call thing that we see when God calls a prophet. The skepticism, the refusal, the, God, have you seen me? There must be anybody better than me. You should go talk to somebody else. And God tells him, no, no, you're exactly who I need. You're exactly who I need because I'll give you what you need and I'll be with you. To us, this says that you're strong and ready as you'll ever be to step into your future call, not because you have all your ducks in a row or have an excellent resume full of marketable skills, You're strong and worthy of call into a future because God is doing it with you. So in the face of this unfolding and uncertain future, take off your sandals. We're called into a co-creating relationship with God, but it's hard to do if we keep parts of ourselves hidden. We're so much stronger when we fearlessly engage our own imperfections and lead out of that. God doesn't seek us out and transform us into perfect beings to fulfill God's work. God finds us where we are and empowers us and accompanies us. Weird quirks and hot tempers and crippling insecurity all wrapped up together. God's work isn't done through purified, glimmering saints. God's work is done through the grittiness of our lives lived out together. In big moments, it's important to know yourself and to be able to be fully yourself with others and before God. The future may not be certain, But we know that we don't do it alone. And so I love here how we learn what God is like. God is with us, building relationships in a particular moment. And at that same time, God is eternal. God is there before the first creatures, and God will be there long after the end of all that we can conceive of. And this hugeness goes with that intimacy of relationship. 
The God who flung the stars is the one who knows and seeks out the potential in each one of us. Even in times of uncertainty, maybe in times of transition, God is inviting us to explore possibilities together in relationship. So I see us as a flash, really, in the scope of this world. I mean, on a geological scale, blink and you miss us. But even that short flash can make a big flare. In times when the future creaks open before us, how do we invite God to co-create with us? While I was working on this, I came across a poem that I've heard used in commissioning services, things related to call. It's by Rainier Marie Rilke, and he writes, You, sent out beyond your recall, go to the limits of your longing. Embody me. Flare up like a flame and make big shadows that I can move in. Let everything happen to you. Beauty and terror. Just keep going. No feeling is final. Don't let yourself lose me. Nearby is the country they call life. You will know it by its seriousness. Give me your hand. How will you flare up? What shadows will your light, will your life cast that the very God who flung the stars might move in? What future may spark forth when your flash strikes up against the holiness of God? First, open yourself. Hold your imperfections gently and your value as a beloved of God close to your heart. When you see that curiosity of a bush engulfed in flame, but not consumed, pause. Look closer and take off your sandals. Amen.